Hi, I'm Todd Kelly. I'm part of the Xbox research team and the user researcher for World's Edge Studio and the Age of Empires franchise. And I'm Savannah Harrison, the live ops producer for Age of Empires 4 and the former flight lead for World's Edge Studio. And we're here today to talk to you about how the user research and the flighting teams work together over the development of Age of Empires 4 to help make a great experience for all of our players. For those of you who aren't familiar, Age of Empires is a historically based real-time strategy franchise, and Age 4 came out last October, the first new entry in the franchise in a decade. So there were a lot of expectations, both internally and externally, that we were dealing with to make this as good of an experience as possible. So Todd's given some great context about what Age of Empires is, um, and given the nature of this conference, um, we're fairly certain that you all know what you are is as well. Um, so we're going to focus on what flighting is. Um, and essentially, flighting is an semi-obtuse term for a mechanism for capturing player feedback. Uh, flighting is a tool that allows you to distribute pre-release software on the hardware of others, um, set up clear lines of questioning, and gather feedback so that you can intake, on, intake it and iterate on that feedback to make your product even better. So why even do this? Who does it benefit? Well, like any research activity, it benefits the player by creating a better final product for them to engage with. But in the case of flighting, it also benefits the player by getting them involved early in the process and giving them visibility into how their feedback uh, makes the experience better overall. We also found that flighting is an excellent motivator and morale booster for the development team. Um, by getting to share what you are working on early, uh, you're able to kind of sit with and engage with players early on. Um, we've also found that flighting is a great path for building customer advocates prior to release so that when you are ready to launch your title, people are ready to talk about it as well. We think it's pretty important before we move forward to acknowledge where we work. Um, so World's Edge is a part of the Xbox Game Studios. Xbox Research is obviously a part of Xbox as well, which means that we work for Microsoft. Um, and that means that we're able to benefit from a number of established resources and routines. It means that we are able to lean on and discuss with partner teams who are also undergoing the work of flighting. And we are able to improve upon our processes um, with help from folks who have already started this journey. It also means that there are certain constraints that smaller studios um, may not have to navigate or may be able to navigate differently um, from us when it comes to engaging with and kind of communicating um, in, in a public facing way. So I imagine most people in this audience are going to be familiar with how playtesting works, especially in a lab space. But how does it compare to the information that we get from flighting? Well, with the flight, we're typically focusing on specific player groups that have been carefully assembled, something like a group of pro players or a group of content creators. Also, a flight typically lasts longer than your usual lab test, and that gives us a chance to look at how experiences develop over time. For example, what does the competitive meta start to look like? Additionally, it gives us a chance to uh, send the experience out to a broader range of people than we normally would by just sticking within the lab. Now, I don't need to uh, explain too much about playtesting, but some of the key differences here are that within a lab test, we're typically looking at a more general audience rather than this targeted handcrafted audience. Uh, we typically have a more consistent and controlled experience for all of our participants so that we have uh, consistency in our metrics that we collect over time. Also, necessarily, we're going to have more opportunity for observation in the lab space, uh, which, as we all know, is something that often generates some of our most salient insights. But the important thing is both of these things are directed towards empowering the customers, including them in the development cycle, getting that early necessary feedback to improve the game and allowing us to gauge where we're on track and where more work is needed. Uh, I have worked on titles that both have and haven't included flighting. Not every title needs it, not every title can support it. Uh, but what I really appreciate from having it there is having that additional data stream that allows us to tap in more deeply to a specific 
specific segment of the audience and to really watch how their opinions shift over time as they see changes in the game. So Todd already touched on one of the advantages of fighting being able to, uh, being able to reach specific player groups and specific subsets within your audience. Uh, we wanted to talk about three of the groups that we worked with as we scaled in terms of development, meaning as the product became more polished and as we were able to share it with more people. Um, so starting with our council group, uh, this is a group of highly competitive, very motivated age players who um, represent specific age communities. Uh, that means that some of these council members uh, represent the age one community, the age two community, the age three community, and so on. They have very strong points of view about what makes an age game an age game. And in some cases, those points of view conflict with one another, um, which was a challenging and interesting problem space for us. Uh, the council group represented an archetype that we knew we were going to be working with um, once we released the title and so we obviously wanted to have them represented um, in our flighting and in our pre-release events. Uh, we also worked with a second council known as the Court of Ages. Uh, these were women from our community who had um, you know shown up in specific spaces who had a lot to say and, and a lot to think and thought a lot about our titles. Um, it's worth noting that you know we heard from diverse audiences throughout flighting. Um, as we continued to scale and reach larger audiences, but we specifically wanted to make a commitment for building a safe and secure space for this particular audience, the Court of Ages, to speak with us, um, to provide feedback on their experience, um, and to help guide the trajectory for Age of Empires IV. Uh, the next group that we worked with is our Microsoft employee group. So this is back to what we had mentioned at the top, which is that, you know, we benefited from certain networks within the company that we work for. There's a large number of employees at Microsoft that are globally distributed, and we found that a significant portion of them, uh, in fact, enjoy games and in fact enjoy Age of Empires. Um, so this group was wonderful to work with because not only did they view themselves as players of age and were motivated to see Age of Empires for um, further improve, similar to the way that our council approached this effort, um, but they were also within our company network, uh, which meant that in certain cases we could share aspects of the game with them that we weren't ready to share with a strictly external audience. And then finally, we worked with a group known as the Age Insiders. Our Age Insiders represent casual to competitive players of age, as well as dabblers, people who have heard about Age of Empires for or, um, and for whatever reason are motivated to check it out, provide their feedback, um, are looking for a good fit for themselves within the within the age title. Our insiders are um, a group that we worked with on our betas and stress tests. So one of the tools that we had at hand to help us understand where our different audiences were coming from was a set of player profiles that we had constructed for the whole franchise based on previous survey feedback. This was really helpful to contextualize the information we were getting by giving us a chance to understand what are some of the typical behaviors that different groups exhibit when they're playing age and what are some of their motivations that bring them to this particular game. And this was very important by allowing us to put proper weight on certain pieces of feedback, understand where we were over-indexing on certain perspectives and under-indexing on others, and even to refresh and reconfigure these different audiences by identifying some gaps in what we were doing. Uh, now, this is just one particular approach for understanding the audience in this way. Uh, this approach wasn't even necessarily perfect. There are uh, shortcomings that we were aware of at the time, and we're working to revise it even now, but it was very helpful to be able to look at all of this different feedback we were getting from this particular lens and know that one piece or another was directed towards one aspect of the game or another. So 
As a producer, um, I would be remiss not to talk about planning um, as well as scheduling. So, you know, we're not going to belabor this point, but ultimately getting answers takes time. So a few recommendations that we would leave you with, um, build room for yourself to breathe, um, pad your schedule when it comes to flighting as much as possible. Typically, you're going to need a little bit more time um, kind of taking this from end to end as well by padding your flighting schedule, um, you can kind of pivot based off of the development schedule as well. Um, ultimately, if you are planning a flight, you have to have a build that's ready. Be prepared to collaborate well and collaborate often. Todd and I are just two representatives of the flighting journey that um, Age of Empires IV undertook. We were supported by a number of co colleagues across a number of different disciplines from CS, uh, customer support, to community, quality assurance, um, including obviously uh, Xbox research, production, and development teams. Uh, it's really important to understand how each of these teams are going to fit into the process, and it's also important to understand how you can support them in the work that they're going to undertake. Um, and finally, make sure you're treating a flight as a true release. Um, as much as possible, flights are meant to be controlled environments built upon trust with the audience who is engaging in the flight. But whether via misunderstanding or confusion, there's always the potential that content could leak from a flight. So um, make sure that what you're putting out there is something that you would be proud to speak to or have discussed in the event of a leak. So as researchers, we're very familiar with the idea that we have to set expectations with our dev partners about what we can accomplish and what time it's going to take to do that. In flighting, that's even more critical, and you have to consider multiple groups of stakeholders, uh, including the audience in this case. Uh, so one of the first expectations that you need to set with this group is that development takes time. The game is not going to look anything like its final stages in the early points of pre-production. And so they can't necessarily expect that feedback will get in the next month. Uh, but at the same time, it's critical to let them know when they might expect their feedback to start to change the game. Along with that, uh, you need to let them know that they won't necessarily get everything that they're asking for. That includes transparency and visibility into the production process, although some amount of that is important, as well as particular items of feedback, either because of design vision or because of production constraints. We're not able to action on everything, and it's really important to be transparent about when that's happening versus something that's just taking a little bit longer to get in. And then on the dev side, uh, related to that very point, you need to get your partners comfortable with the idea that they're going to need to tell these audiences something, uh, give them some indication of how feedback is being responded to and when they might expect to see changes. Uh, you need to be clear on when exactly uh, you're going to need feedback on different parts of the game. Typically as a researcher, that's my core responsibility, but when we have deeper dive conversations, then the devs also need to be carrying that notion forward. And most critically, it's important for everyone to remember that this group is volunteers. They're doing this uh, out of their love and devotion and interest in the game. And we need to properly respect their time and their energy to build up that environment of trust. So a big part of how you set these expectations and how you keep the audience going are the tools that you use to communicate. And we use multiple different channels depending on what we were wanting to accomplish, uh, whether that was using discords and forums as a way to communicate what was coming up and dig into deeper conversations about aspects of the game, or anonymous surveys that allowed us to track the breadth of issues that we were seeing, give people a more secure place to give their feedback, Back and also see when something was a widespread issue versus the uh, particular feedback of one or two very loud voices. Uh, Todd already touched on the fact that flighting audiences are made up of volunteers, so you need to be clear in your expectations of what you will and won't ask them to do. Flighting audiences are also people. They are juggling their own lives, their own realities. In some cases, they are coming up against a global pandemic and kind of learning to live in light of that. Um, so it's really important when you are working with a flighting group that you are building in opportunities for them to uh, have a little downtime, so make sure that 
that you are not flighting continuously. Um, you also need to make sure that at each stage of development, you're sitting and reflecting on the people that you need to be hearing from. It could be that the group that you started with needs to be augmented or supplemented with other voices as additional aspects of the game come online. Finally, it's really important to express gratitude when you're working with these audiences that are in fact giving you their time. Uh, one way that we went about this with Age of Empires 4 is that we provided our council and insider groups with in-game rewards that allow them to demonstrate the space that they filled um, in terms of the development on the title. Um, this is just a really nice thing that they can kind of showcase um, and it reflects in the game itself. Um, but we also learned quite quickly that internal motivation is the best reward of all. So the way that you can kind of showcase this is by reflecting on and sharing the impact that your flighting audience had. So at the end of each flight or beta, and even in our kind of live operations, we make sure to call out what we have heard from our audience and what we are doing as a result of um, what we have heard. So it's really important to take that time and communicate those learnings. So as Savannah already alluded to, uh, given that this game came out in October 2021, uh, we spent the final part of production under the pandemic and struggling uh, with that whole scenario. And because we had so many of these flighting processes already set up, uh, this was a real lifesaver when we got to a point that we could no longer do testing in the lab. Uh, and that gave us an opportunity to really solidify some of our best practices about how to be most successful in flighting. Uh, so a few of the things that we focused on were splitting our focus between our audience groups, uh, relying on the council for feedback on the competitive gameplay loop. And like Savannah said, turning to our insiders when it was time to test the more sensitive campaign content uh, that we knew that we could trust them with. Similarly, uh, whereas early on in flighting, we would tend to just kind of do a broad approach and say, here, here's the game, play it. Uh, we knew that around the time of the pandemic, we really needed to be targeted with our goals. And each flight would have a specific set of things that they were that it was focused on and feedback that we were trying to collect because that's what the dev team was looking at at that particular point in time. Uh, and finally, having a plan means you can pivot the plan. Um, it's really important to make sure that you have a strong sense of your schedule and that you're also reflecting on the schedules of your partners, um, whether it is in terms of game development um, or your community or customer support team's capacity to assist you. Um, we would just recommend you know, keeping a strong sense of your plan, uh, scheduling in advance, and uh, really motivating people to kind of check in internally, be transparent about moving forward. Word. Over the course of 18 flights and many, many lab studies, uh, what did we get out of all of this? Quite a bit. Uh, in fact, much more than we'd be able to cover in just a couple of slides. But to highlight a few key points, uh, we were able to track the sense of ageness to the game. How much did this feel like part of the Age of Empires franchise? And that sentiment on its own was super helpful, but it was also uh, the motivators behind that sentiment, different pieces of the game that were or weren't feeling quite Quite right that were incredibly useful for us uh, in terms of knowing what parts of the game we needed to focus on and where we can continue to make improvements even after launch. Uh, one of those points was the overall sense of responsiveness to the game. Uh, as a competitive game, any sort of lag was obviously going to be a big problem. And by having uh, very specific close conversations between our audience and the dev team, we were able to triage some of these issues and make really fine-grained adjustments that improved the feel of the game overall. And uh, as we've alluded to before, by working with our internal audience uh, at Microsoft, we were able to pivot from when we couldn't do lab studies to really focus on the introductory experience of the game, how people were taught the systems and learned how to play the game. And we created an onboarding system that was much better for both returning age players and people new to the genre overall. 
And while we were flighting the product, we were also flighting the process of flighting, which means that uh, we took the opportunity to check in with our audiences and kind of understand what was or wasn't working for them. Um, through this kind of conversation and by admitting the fact that our flighting process had room to expand and improve, we were able to um, continuously change the process, um, kind of working with our groups to understand that yes, they needed more heads up um, to plan their time accordingly, but they also needed more time to play the builds that we provided them. So one of the key learnings that we took is that with every flight that we host, we try to build in at least two weekends worth of time. Um, all this to say, we are still refining this process. Launch was only the beginning for us. Uh, Pre-release flighting has been phenomenal, but it has really given us a platform for continuing to grow our player feedback processes and tooling, and we are applying that to the Age of Empires IV um, live journey as well. And finally, we won't speak to each of these points in detail because we've been kind of speaking to them the whole time. Um, but we really hope that what you come out of this presentation with is the fact that partnership and respecting your partners um, is invaluable when it comes to a process like flighting. Uh, it really is a cross-discipline effort. And that accountability is key, meaning that you are entering into a commitment when you are working with user research and flighting. That means that you're not only going to share share aspects of your game, but you're going to change aspects of your game. Similarly, it's critical to set their, your expectations with your audience and with your partners early and often and respond when it's necessary to change. And then make sure you're setting reasonable goals for the process overall. Uh, flighting can feel like magic at times, but it's a lot of work and being targeted and not trying to go overboard and handle everything is going to be a key component of, of success. We hope that this was a helpful and informative presentation for you. If you have any questions or would like to discuss some of these topics, you should feel free to reach out to Savannah and myself. We're very happy to discuss it with you. Thank you. Thank you.